All right, hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for watching today. Um, look, before we get started on this video, I want to say something. Uh, if you watched the last video and read the comments, um, look, I was misinformed or I didn't know. I was ignorant to the fact that four-door Nova parts car that I got is not an SS car, okay? I thought I thought any car, any, any Nova, kind of like the Pintos, I guess, or like the Vegas, anything like, you know, like, Anyways, anything with five lugs and a V8, um, an economy car like that was an SS. Apparently not. Apparently 64, they came out with five lug, and then 65, you could get a V8 option. Okay. They did make an SS car, two-door hotter top. Thank you guys for pointing that out. I was wrong. If you can't see it in the video now, it's because I went back in and edited it, so you can't comment anymore on it. So I apologize for misinforming the public. So, with that being said, um... Thank you for watching, and um, look, in this video, I'm going to show you how I, I like to do my brakes, um, a, a cheap and inexpensive disc brake conversion for a 9-inch rear end. However, this is for off-road use. This is not DOT. Don't go out and put this on your street car that you're going to drive around every day. Some people may. I'm not going to. Just saying. You shouldn't either. However, with that being said... I have about 200 bucks in this whole setup. The most expensive part of this is the rotors, okay? Um, I'll give you part numbers for the rotors here in a little bit. Um, it's very simple. However, what I will recommend is you going and finding somebody, if you don't have a good stick welder or a TIG machine, go find somebody, or if you're not capable in your um, welding skills, this is going to be a, like a higher level. It's okay to weld these brackets in with a MIG welder, but go and get somebody to go back over them with a better rod, a thicker, make them beefier, so you don't rip a caliper off and lose all brakes, okay? Um, very basic setup. 86 Monte Carlo GM metric calipers. Uh, you can get these weld on caliper brackets just about anywhere, eBay, any speed shop, Speedway. They all sell these brackets. They're very inexpensive. They used to only be like 20 bucks. Now they've gone up to about 30 bucks. I think I paid like uh, 45 for uh, for the set. Um, calipers, they're AFCO. I forget the part number, 600 something, I don't know. But um, if you're gonna run an aftermarket actually you almost have to run these rotors, okay? Um, brake lines are also off of 86 Monte Carlo. These little tabs right here, you can get them off of eBay. They're like a dollar a piece. Go ahead and buy them in bulk because you never know when you're going to need them. Uh, keep them on the shelf. Um, really, that's about it. Uh, I invite you along to come and watch and see how I install it. Okay, just so we're clear, the reason I'm cutting this part out here is because I need to close this distance. If you look at these brake pads, they're only barely pinching the rotor, so it needs to sit further down. It needs to come down here. So I'm going to cut this out so that this caliper will sit down. In the past, I've had problems with them clearing the wheels. They won't clear the your wheels, your 15-inch wheels, if you leave leave them too high um, and plus you want this brake pad to pinch the middle section here so we got the ground the brackets uh, cut down ground down it, it took a little bit of fitment um, and basically what what you're looking for here is that your pads are engaging fully on this rotor right here um, and you don't want it too low to where it's hitting the hat on your bracket or on your uh, rotor so just for a reference this is where the stock ones sit right and so or how they come pre-cut it'd be nice if somebody cut these or the people that sold these um these housing pins made a set of these also that fit um, the outside diameter however so you know just cut this much out of it um, all right so it's hard to tell here but this 
this bracket is actually going to sit flush against here. So I will have to weld a bead around here and then what I have to do later is come in and drill a half inch hole on the back side because these are actually threaded. Okay, so there's one other thing I want to point out. The placement of this caliper is very important. Um, I, I guess a lot of times you see them straight up on top like this, but I put mine directly at the back. Um, that way your bleeder valve or your bleeder for your caliper to get all the brake fluid out is up directly at the top of the rear end. Uh, so keep that in mind. So we're going to get ready to weld this bracket on and I wanted to show you how I align it. I'm not saying this is the best way to do it um, by any means. However, um, this is how I do it. So I've got my bracket where it sits flush. It sits where I like it. I like where the brake pads sit. I check my wheels, it clears my wheels. This caliper clears the uh, inside of my wheels. I have the caliper bolted, um, or the rotor bolted tight to the axle. I have the caliper bolted tight to the bracket, okay? So, as you can tell, this caliper is loose and it'll wobble, wobble around, okay? So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take air and I'm gonna put it into where you would, I'm gonna put my air hose into where the brake line would go in right and the bleeder valves closed and i'm going to apply pressure and once it applies pressure it's going to tighten everything up and square and true this caliper to this rotor so i'll show you how i do that okay you see how it all squeezed together now you can see there is a gap in between the bracket and the flange here i want this to be flush um, so I can get as much clearance. So I'm going to hit it again with air and then I'll push this bracket over at the same time. Alright. So now it's... It's square. I mean, I, look. I'm using new pads. I, I wouldn't do this with like an old set of pads because they wear funny. But I have done this before and it works really good. Um... So now what I'll do is I'll apply pressure and weld this in at the same time. We got both calipers and brackets, brake pads, all that welded on. They're all bolted up tight. Um, and I got the hoses installed. Now, I do want to give a quick shout out to uh, AutoZone's quality control because this is a 7 16 bolt on this side and this is a 10 millimeter bolt on this side. Why? I don't know. So, um, when you buy this stuff, Keep in mind, now the bolts came with the calipers, these are supposed to be metric, so I anticipated them to be 10 millimeter, but for some reason that's 7 16 uh, bolt, they're different sizes, it's weird, I don't know. Um, so uh, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this, I got two of these tabs right here. Now I guess I should say this first, I got these calipers, when I went to AutoZone and bought the calipers and brake pads and the hoses, um, I got the calipers. For an 86 Monte Carlo. Now, I got the brake hoses, 86 Monte Carlo. Now, these are front calipers. There will be no parking brake on these. However, Speedway does sell this caliper with a parking brake on it, okay? Just so y'all know. Um, now, I do like these a little better because if, if you notice, they got this like really thick rubber. It keeps from anything from rubbing. You know, I don't imagine it's going to last forever keep it from running a hole in it forever but um they, they're a little heavier duty than say them when you get one that's metal right here and has like a bend in it 
Um, a lot of times they don't actually fit. They'll run into the axle or something. So I like these. I also pick them up off of 70 Nova. But uh, these are 12 bucks a piece. And the Nova ones are like $24 a piece. So uh, save 25 bucks on this thing. Now look, while we're, while we're talking, before I get into this, um, yeah, okay, so if you're going to do this and you have a, you go to the junkyard and pull the rear end, say out of a, a Ford truck, and this is just a piece of knowledge I'm, I'm going to throw out there to y'all so that y'all have it, okay? Now, I bought these rotors, right, They're because they're for a car bolt pattern, they're for um, Chevy car, Ford car. Now, if you go, they won't fit a Chevy truck, a five on five and a half, or five on five. They'll fit five on four and three quarter and five on four and a half. So if you're trying to get a truck bolt pattern, Chevy truck bolt pattern, I don't know what to tell you. But I do know what to tell you if you go and get one that is a um, drum, uh, drum brake rear end out of a 60s model Ford pickup or 70s model Ford pickup. And you want to use those axles because sometimes the 60 model 64 Ford pickups are pretty close to a uh, to the right length. Um, so if you're going to use stock axles with a five on five and a half, the big lug pattern, here's the secret: go and get you some front brake calipers or brake. I'm not calipers, front brake rotors off of a 80s model Ford Bronco, like the OJ Simpson one, right? Go get front front rotors off those. They will bolt right up. You can weld these brackets on them. They're only like 20 bucks a piece, or I don't know what they are nowadays, but they used to be like $25 a piece for the rotors, and you can save a lot of money. Now, keep in mind, my rotors were almost 60 bucks a piece, so that raised my price up. For this whole brake kit, I'm in it for about 200 bucks, okay? Which still isn't too bad, um, but it works well and the parts are somewhat universal besides the rotors okay um, so back to I'm gonna weld this on now the purpose of having a brake hose here instead of having a hard line is this caliper is gonna slide back and forth right so you're gonna want a little bit of flex now you don't have to be a whole lot but you're gonna want a little bit so that it doesn't bend or bind now the key here is you buy these tabs from Speedway. I think they only sell them like 10 to a pack. So I had these already. And what they do is they fit over here and you put the little clip on them and you weld it into place like this. Now I want to push my line back because I want a little bit of play in there. Now the second thing is to keep in mind, if you look at these, let me see if I can zoom in. Hold on, focus. There we go. So um, you see this little notch right here? It has one here and one up here. You have to go in with the file and file this down or grinder or what have you. I'll probably use a grinder. And then this will slide over and I got a pack of clips that will slide down in there. You know what I'm talking about. Y'all all had to deal with them. So, um, and then before I do that, what I'll do is I'll go and cut a little bit of a radius out. Grind a little bit of a radius out so it fits well on the axle because flat doesn't fix around. Um, now the third thing. I'm going to say, and I heard this one off of, I think, Roadkill Garage here a while back, and I was like, man, that is a great idea. If you look at these brake lines, factory brake lines, okay, they are all run pretty much along the top of the axle, and then they come up and they go into your drums back here on top, right, because that's where your bleeder are, everything's on top. Now, I still use this, however, I'm going to move this to the back side of this axle. And the reason why is because if I throw a strap over this axle, I don't want it to pinch my brake line. I heard that on Roadkill Garage or something along those lines. And I thought, boy, that is a great idea. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so y'all stay with me and I'll we'll go ahead and get these tabs welded on. And um, we'll get this video wrapped up. brake lines installed um, both sides are done both calipers are on both are welded in place um, now look I need to go back and I need to re-weld all this stuff but um, 
I'm gonna wait till I get my four link brackets and my coilover brackets on this rear end. So, um, in the next week or so, I don't know. I've been super. It's super hot. I work outside. Um, it's hot. I'm tired. I just don't have enough time at this moment. But within the next probably week, week and a half, I'll get another video of putting this in the um, Nova up and out. Um, anyways. Uh, all I have left to do on this is replace this line right here. This is the hose that goes to your chassis or the brake line on your chassis, the hard line. Uh, I'm going to replace it with one out of a um, 70 model Nova. I think that's the cheapest one I found. It was like eight bucks or nine bucks. And then uh, run a short line from here to there and then from here all the way down and around to here. Now remember I'm running these are along the back, the back side of the axle. Um, so, uh, yeah thanks for watching um like subscribe comment now remember like i said in the beginning this is for off-road use only don't do this and put it on the highway i don't want to be responsible for you your welds you breaking an item um use common sense i know you could argue that uh, it's probably better on the highway than on the racetrack um yeah no I haven't had one of these brackets break yet, but that's not to say that somebody hasn't had one break. So, um, look, I don't want to be held responsible. I'm just showing you what I'm doing as documentation purpose. Um, with that being said, remember, like, subscribe, comment, and we see you guys back, back next time. Thank you.